what is a test life cycle? A test life cycle is the process in which the test instance is created, it's managed and destroyed. So unlike other classes in your code base, when you run this thing, when you right click and say run as and run as JUnit test, who's, initiate, who's initializing this class? This needs to be an instance, right? Maths utils test needs to be an instance. Somebody has to say new math utils test. Who is doing that? That's JUnit, right? JUnit is managing the life cycle of this class. And that's what we're gonna be learning about. We're gonna learn about what causes this to happen and when does the instance get created. And another interesting thing that JUnit does is it gives you hooks. It gives you an opportunity to execute code at certain points in that life cycle, from the creation of the class all the way to its termination. So we're gonna be examining that. There is an equivalent of this in uh, in JUnit 4 as well. Uh, a lot of the syntax has changed though. JUnit 4 had different annotations, different APIs. It has changed in JUnit 5, so let's examine those so that you're comfortable with the new way of doing things in JUnit 5. All right, we talked about the test uh, class instance being created, all right? So let's assume this hypothetical uh, test class and it has, let's say, three methods, right? So you have uh, method one, method two, and method three. So when the class runs, when you run a test, then JNet is gonna run this first method, the second method, and the third method. There is no saying what the order of these methods are gonna be though. It is essentially random. It could pick it based on alphabetical order, it could be something else. JUnit has an order annotation. There is an add order that you can place on top of method and say, okay, I want this method run first, this method run second. But if you're doing that, I would seriously uh, urge you to re-examine your strategy because you don't want these methods to be dependent on one another. You don't want to say, okay, this method, this test runs only after this thing becomes successful, right? That doesn't make sense. You want these methods to be uh, independent of each other so that they run uh, and they report the right status, whether success or failure, irrespective of where in the order it runs. So this makes it, make, it makes it very handy to run them in parallel, you know, split it across multiple machines. There are various ways in which you can optimize JUnit testing and you essentially want them to be decoupled for you to be able to do all that. So considering that they don't run in order, right? So you have uh, the class that you know, and then first method could be anything, second method could be anything, third method could be anything. It's just, you just All you know is that these are methods of this class and as long as they have the add test annotation, they are going to run eventually, sometime or the other in this test life cycle, all right? So this is something that JUnit manages and incidentally, JUnit actually creates a new class instance for every test run, for every method run rather. So here's what happens. Uh, and before I tell that, let me tell you one other thing. Uh, I was talking about the order, right? One very common uh, trap that people fall into when they're writing tests is they create the state outside the method, which is very, very bad. I'll tell you what it is so that you know that you know what it is that you shouldn't be doing. Um, Let's say you have a method inside the test, right? So here is um, here's my uh, math utils test, right? So let's say I wanna create some uh, value, let's say pi, right? So I have, uh, I'm using this number here, which is kind of pi times 100. Let's say it's a constant that you wanna use or some variable or some object you wanna use, test data you wanna use. What about you create a, a member variable here, right? and then you put that uh, value in that member variable. So from your test, you let's say I have, uh, um, I don't know, um, in cached value equals zero, and then um, somewhere inside the class, I'm going to say cached value equals 10, and then below here, I'm going to check if cached value equals 10. You know what I mean? So there is one test, which is putting something into the member variable, and then another test which is kind of dependent on this. This is kind of a, a fellow uh, crime to ordering tests, right? Just like it's bad to order tests, it's bad to do this too, right? Because you don't want um, one test to be dependent on another, and then you're not exactly uh, restricting the order, but you're kind of affecting the way the test behaves depending on the order. So 
this test would behave differently if this ran first versus if this ran first. You know what I'm saying? So this is also a bad thing. Uh, in JUnit 5, this is actually not even possible because JUnit creates a new test instance every time a test method runs. Test add runs, well, there is a new MathUtils test. Test divide runs, there's a new MathUtils test. All right, so it's a new instance for every method. So this wouldn't even work. Anytime you're checking this, you are gonna get the default value, right? So it helps in that sense. So that's another thing that you shouldn't be doing, all right? 